What's up, Believe Nation? Welcome to season two of Million Dollar Businesses, where I break down what it takes to build a million dollar plus business in different industries. This season, we look at the restaurant industry. I sit down with Nelson Braff, the founder of the Hunt and Fish Club here in Manhattan, New York City, and he's gonna tell me what it takes to be a success in the restaurant business. The Hunt and Fish Club is a three-time Star Diamond Award winner, has clients like Bill Gates, Lori Grenier, Derek Jeter, Justin Timberlake, and investors like Gary Vee. Nelson's waiting for me inside. Let's go in and pick his brain. 90% of restaurants in New York never see an anniversary. Wow. Some percentage of them never open their doors. Wow. And it's a, if I'm off, I'm off slightly. It's a right. horrific number. There's no such thing as information overload. You need information in this business. Frankly, I wish I would have known when I started everything I know now. So Nelson, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for making the time in your beautiful restaurant. It's an honor being here. Thank you. For just a quick contact for my audience who may not be familiar with the Hunt and Fish Club, give us the quick story of your success. Um, so uh, a number of years ago, we're about to celebrate our fourth anniversary this January, this coming January. My partner, Raytown Sugarman and I were went out to a steakhouse in New York City, and it was during the summer, it was warm. And sitting not too far from us was a guy in uh, eyes out shirt, jeans, and open sandals. And we looked at each other and said, when did it become okay in a New York City steakhouse to be that casual? And it just seemed a little odd to us. We're both old souls and we remember the day of people wore jackets and so on. And like, when, when did this go away? So we came up with an idea of let's do our own steak and seafood house and while we don't have a dress code necessarily, we wanted to design a place where people might feel a little uncomfortable not being dressed a little bit better. We wanted to bring back some elegance and some of like an old world look and feel to a New York City place. Uh, we used as role models, uh, role, if that's the right word, if Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis, and Dean Martin were alive today, what would the restaurant they ate in actually look like? Right. So we spoke to some friends of theirs who are thankfully still with us and mutual friends, and they told us the design elements of what they liked. So we created that, and like I said, while we don't have a dress code, we wanted a little bit of the formality of, uh, of that era gone by, and frankly, I think we nailed it. I love it. So it's been a straight ride since then. I'm kidding. It's anything but a straight <laughs> ride. Um, and uh, but we're doing OK. Cool. So in this series, we are going to break down your 10 lessons on how to build a successful restaurant for somebody who wants to get into the industry. After I'm done doing it, I might actually watch it. So I learn. There you go. OK, watch it back. <laughs> right. Uh, so lesson number one was the importance of passion. So talk to me about passion. Why is it so important? You, I mean, you come from being a lawyer. How does how does your passion for the restaurant business get started? Talk me through that. That's a great question, frequently asked by my wife, actually. Okay. Because <laughs> she started out marrying a lawyer. She ended up with a guy who owns a restaurant or a couple of restaurants. Um, and passion, it's not just restaurants, it's anything. You do, everyone has to work to support themselves, but it's not really work if you love it. You do better at it. You don't feel like you're working. You look forward to going in every day. Um, and I still do other things. I'm not just in the restaurant business, but I love this. Like, it's not necessarily my income. It is my passion. Uh, I love being here. I love seeing the people. I love feeling like I'm throwing a party every night. And while we certainly charge people to come to my party, I want them to enjoy it as if they were in my house at a party. Right. And I... I love every part of it. And frankly, if you don't, you, you can't work, in, not in this business anyway, it's too tough. If you don't love it, it's not gonna work. I mean, restaurant business is one of the highest failure rates of any business. And, and it's actually a misnomer to call it a business. Uh, I seem to remember that in business, there's some correlation between risk and reward. Okay. Here, it's, there is none. <laughs> there okay. is no relationship at all between risk. It's all risk and very little reward. So it's kind of a hobby that pays or loses, maybe. Right. But uh, to call it a business is almost a challenge. Okay, interesting. <laughs> and then you've got 
so many people who want to start a restaurant. There's so many people who love food and love the idea of having their own place and especially a beautiful place like this here in the middle of Manhattan. Everyone who serves, uh, has a dinner party at home and the guests tell them, wow, you're a terrific cook, right. thinks they could run a restaurant. Right. My wife is a terrific cook. Okay. She couldn't run this place. So, so what would you tell those people? If somebody's thinking about starting the restaurant. I tell them the, the best job in a restaurant is customer. Okay. <laughs> and they should try to stick that. No, it's, um, there's a lot of components to go into it and they should learn before they spend. Okay. Don't just jump into it. It won't work. So how, what, what's your advice? I mean, how would, how should they go learn? Go work in a restaurant group, mm. learn how to open, what to look for, site location, funding. Like there's a lot of components to it. It's not as simple as build it and they will come and serve good food and everyone will show up and there'll be a line around the block. It doesn't work like that at all. Um, the, I, I would tell them just be careful, bring in people, learn it and bring in people who've done it. Um, otherwise you're, I, I don't remember the exact statistic, but somewhere in the neighborhood of 90% of restaurants in New York never see an anniversary. Wow. Some percentage of them never open their doors. Wow. And it's, a, if I'm off, I'm off slightly. It's a right. horrific number. Right. It's, it's not good. And so how do you increase your likelihood of success? It will get to that throughout the day, but um, you, there is no such thing as information overload. You need information in this business. Frankly, I wish I would have known when I started everything I know now. Hmm. I, I've made a lot of the mistakes that I will suggest people try to avoid. Okay. If we had to pick one, what would be a big one? Money. Hmm. Okay. Being undercapitalized. Okay. We're going to get the funding. That's we'll coming up. Funding, that's coming up. That's, that's a big one. Okay. And how, did you always have a passion for the restaurant business? No. Okay. Never thought about it in my life. Okay. Uh, couldn't have been further from my thought process. Okay. Um, I went to law school. My parents were civil servants. My uncle was a lawyer. And I figured, I saw we needed about six months lead time to plan a vacation. He sort of went on a whim. Okay. I said, I like the whim thing. So I'm going to be a lawyer. Okay. I became a lawyer. It was fun. I did it for a lot of years. I. I liked the people more than I liked the work. Right. So then I went into finance. I did that. And somewhere along the line, I started to get into the mindset of not in the hospitality business, but I was out late at night in clubs and going to restaurants. We, my partner and I had these friends who were late night people and I used to go and I felt like a fish out of water, but I was found myself in nightclubs at two in the morning on Monday nights. I'm like, if I'm going to do this, I need to own it because it's certainly not good for my career. Right. Um, and so we built a nightclub, which did well, um, but I didn't like the model. You build it and you're planning to go out of business the day after you bit like, how long is this going to last? And then we sort of switched to restaurants. So it was still, the, still in the nightlife genre, but there's staying power. Mm. Like, there's no such thing as a hundred year old nightclub. Right, right. There's a bunch of hundred year old restaurants. Is that the goal for you? Pass uh, it down? Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, maybe uh, pass it down, sell it. I'm not into the pass it down thing because then you're sort of telling your kids right. what they should be doing with their life. And I'm not a big fan of that. I'm more into the world is a big place. If it take wherever it takes you, let it take you. Um, do you like the idea of having this place last for a hundred years or I'm trying to care? get through the lease? Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, if it does, <laughs> if it does, it's fine. Um, like some people have used the expression, you build these with an idea to sell. I'm like, no, you build it to make money mm -hmm. and everything that goes into that, which includes customer experience. Cause if they have a bad experience, you can't make money. Um, and if you are successful, then somebody will want to buy it. Is that the goal? I'm not that far out. My goal is to do well. Yeah. My goal is to maybe get more of them, perhaps, if that's where the world takes us. And if down the road somebody wants an order, it's fine. If it doesn't happen, that's also fine. It's, it's just that's not part of my universe of thought. My universe of thought is it has to be successful financially, and I want people to enjoy coming here. And those two go side by side. If I'm good at the second part, the first part takes care of itself. Right. So, so help me make this connection because we've got, you know, this lesson is about the importance of passion. You have to love it. You, this is not, can't just be a hobby for you. It's, it's a brutal business of all the ones to start. Like this is not the one to start. 
But then here in your story, you're a guy who came from the law and didn't really have a passion for restaurants. So, so I'm worried about somebody watching this and then saying, well, I, I could do that. Like I'm a banker or something. I should just go start a restaurant. Cause there's still some like element of deep passion for you to do this. The passion, at least for me came after I was in it. Okay. I didn't know that I had a passion for it. Huh? I was, I got economically motivated early on. I never had it in my thoughts that I would be running this place and making day-to-day -day decisions and getting three o'clock AM calls about a plumbing leak. And that right, wasn't in right. my wheelhouse. Right. It just sort of happened partly to protect the investment side of it and partly because I just found myself loving it. And I'd say, I don't know if I loved it because I was good at it or if I was good at it because I loved it. I'm not sure. But either way, I found myself being here, talking to guests and having fun and the guests came to see me and I liked seeing them and I, I liked that a lot. Would you recommend that path for other people? I would recommend a path of if you think you're going to be the key person, because keep in mind, I was never planned on being the front person or the main face of a restaurant. Um, if somebody is prepared for that, then yeah, that, if that's what they're going into it for. Um, and which is why I said they should dip their toe in and maybe get a job in it or something like that before actually committing. Because once you're committed, there's no halfway in this business. Halfway is you won't last a year. Like either you're all in or don't get in. Right. It's different if somebody invests money, it's if it's economically in their wheelhouse, that's fine. It's not a commitment of passion or whatever. And, and that's a different thing. But if they want to be the one who literally picks out the tablecloths and says hello to the guests at the door and and deals with the stress of, oh my God, it's snowing this week. We're going to lose three days of revenues. How am I going to pay the rent? Right. If you want to be that person, then yeah, you better love it because you're going to have the negatives. That's unavoidable. The kitchen will, the dishwasher will break on your busiest night invariably and um, it'll snow when you have your Christmas party planned that everything that can go wrong is going to happen. So you're going to have to deal with all the negatives. Yeah. You, if you don't love the business, you won't have enough of the positives. And so if somebody wants to get into the business and they're going to go dip their toe. What, what's the role? What, what's the best role for me? Am I a server? Am I trying to become GM before? Like at what point do I, I would, yeah, I would do management okay. in it. Um, and the other part is understand your personality. Um, are you outgoing? Are you introverted? And be honest with yourself. So um, an, outgo an outgoing person, personality on a full service restaurant is a big deal. Like it's a people business. I, I don't know about you, but my wife and I, we love going to restaurants where we know the people there. Mm. And maybe they have the best food and maybe it's average. It certainly can't be terrible. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't go there. Right. But people like going where they feel like they know. It's not just going out to dinner. It's going out to see your friends. Your friends happen to work at a restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, so at least that's part of what I wanted to create here. Like I speak to people during the day and I'm like, I'm working tonight. Why don't you come in? And, and they do. Um, and I like seeing them and I hope they like seeing me. I mm -hmm. guess they do because they come. <laughs> they come back. <laughs> like, I suppose. Um, and and if you're very introverted, it doesn't mean you can't go into the business. You just know that you probably aren't mm -hmm. going to be that person unless you force yourself into it. And you can force yourself into it. I, Growing up, I was very introverted. I never knew I had the wherewithal to walk around the restaurant dining room and say hi to people I didn't know. Mm. If you'd have told me that when I was 10 years old, I'd have looked at you like you had three heads. But I like it. And because I like it, I think I've become good at it. Um, and I, I truly have fun when there's no crisis happening on the floor. I, mean, I really do love meeting people. I met a couple from Iowa the other night. Uh, it was great. They were in, they'd never been to New York. They came in for the holiday season. It was great. So they'll, they'll actually be back later tonight. <laughs> they had such a good time. And I told them how to insult the waiter and they'll get a free dessert out of it. <laughs> and they did. And then they found out that I had actually instructed them. Okay. And, and we had fun with it. And cool. so they came to a town that I don't know where in Iowa they're from, but I'm willing to bet it's not a place as big as New York. Right. Um, and all of a sudden they're at a restaurant and they feel important and they're having fun and laughing with the owner of a restaurant they had read about or heard about. And it was a pretty cool experience. And they're coming back two nights later.
three nights later. So yeah, I love that kind of stuff. And then I see people who I know for a couple of years now. And I see people I've known my whole life. Like a lot of the people I'm friendly with in the restaurant, I met through the restaurant. Right. And I see them all the time now. And they really are friends. So I love it. So cool. that's the good part. If you don't have that, recognize it and have somebody who does. As a partner. As a partner, as a well-paid employee. Right. Someone who's there. They call it hospitality for a reason. If it, if it was only about the food, you could have a takeout place. Right. Right. Like you don't need to do all of this. It's part of a total experience uh, that the, from the time they walk in till the time they walk out and you want everyone to feel like they had a really good time, not just that the food was really good. Hmm. The food should be really good. I, I would never minimize that. Right. That's, and we spend endless hours trying to assure that. But it, it's more than that experience. Like if you go to a Broadway show and an actor is really good, but the place stinks, you're not going to have that good a time to say, well, he's a great actor, but I don't have that good a time because right. the place stunk. Right. If the food is really good, that's great. But it, it's only a, it's an important part of the puzzle, but it's not the total puzzle. Got it. So this is a 10 part series with Nelson on how to build a successful restaurant. We are going to move now to the second lesson, which is the importance of culture. Go click the link right there next to us and we will see you there.